Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm building this 1950 Chevy business coupe. And as you can see, I got the front clip on just for mock-up, but I did have to replace those little recorders and I put in a nice ice box for the supercharger. That's what I'm doing on this one. Let's go guys. I definitely don't really want to tear this whole front end apart if I don't have to. I know it's going to need some modification in order to go back on the car in order to fit everything in its place. But for today, I think I just want to like get it all cleaned up um, and kind of hit some of the paint areas with the Comet wash and kind of advance the patina a little bit more. So I just got a pressure washer. I got a huge bottle of degreaser. I'm just going to soak this sucker down, see how clean I can get it. So we got to cleaning up the underside, had it flipped over. And then um, my original plan was just to like clean this up and then just paint over it, but it's pretty, it's rot, it's rust. And I have the new pieces right there. Anyway, I was gonna save them for my other car, but um, if I don't do this, I'm gonna kick myself in the butt, you know, do it right the first time. So yeah, you can see how pitted that is. So yeah, I'm just gonna replace them. I'm gonna cut these out, put the new panels in, and then uh, do, the, do the patina blend there too. So I guess my goal for today has kind of changed, but Let's see if I can get this knocked out. So I have all my relief cuts made in order to make sure that my piece can fit pretty much on there. I basically, on the back side, ground down until I got solid metal and then made a game plan from there. Um, had to cut that much off of the patch panel piece, but now, like, after I basically sandwiched that on there and shoved it down right where it needed to be, I scribed a line, you can see it right there. So that's my cut line, cut that, and basically, butt weld this to that, we should be good to go. Got this side fully welded in. I got most of the welds knocked down with a flap disc. Um, I gotta go back and, and fine tune it, knock it down a little bit more, but that's as far as I wanna go with that thing. I got a hammer and dolly this edge here in order to surround the brace. You can see like how it is down here. Gotta do the same thing right there. And on the front here, how it curves in. I kinda, I wanna try to mimic that. So I'm gonna just play around with hammer and dolly and see if I can't make it all smooth one piece and then finish sanding this side down. And then I should be able to go and start knocking out on that side. One side down. See a little bit of hammer and dolly work. Um, this side I didn't want because it's a compound curve right here. So I didn't really want to. So I basically just ground it until it was smooth there. But you know, I took everything I learned from doing the quarters and the rockers and stuff on that one. And I applied it to here, try to really, really minimize my heat. I know that's a terrible sound, but like no warpage, minimum body filler is gonna be needed just to fill in a little bit of these edges here and it's gonna be awesome. Even though it's for a patina car, but you know, I just wanna put into practice everything I learned and just to see how good I can do it. So if I ever decide to do a good car someday, um, I wouldn't be afraid to tackle it. But yeah, I'm really, really proud of that. Let's get going on the other side. Other side, all done. Didn't turn out as nice as the first side, but it's still I mean, plenty good enough. So I'm gonna give this a skim coat of Bondo because I really wanna get this in primer tonight and then maybe even paint tonight. I don't know, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I really wanna get this section of it done. So yeah, Bondo, sand it down, go from there. Both sides all smoothed out. Got a skim coat of filler on there, just some regular Bondo stuff, uh, but it feels actually really, really nice. Uh, I'm gonna hit it with some primer sealer to seal all that up. And then hopefully some black because I'm going to skip the red oxide because I don't, on these fenders and on the hood, it just says black primer. There's no red oxide whatsoever. And then the green. So my goal, because it is nighttime, um, just to get this on there and the black on there, let that dry. And then I'll go back over it tomorrow with green. And then um, just kind of like fade it, fade it in with the rest of the paint. That's the goal. Yeah. So yeah, primer, black. Primer seal is on, black is on. It's really, it's just wet right now. I hit it with satin black. A couple of runs here and there, not a big deal. But yeah, I'm gonna give this overnight to dry, like I said. And then um, I'm actually doing the firewall at the same time. You can see I got a little bit of filler work and stuff going on there. Cause once I mix that green up, when I paint this green, I also wanna paint that green. 
So, and I also want to do all the undercoating and stuff inside here before I actually paint the green on there because I don't want to get any splatter. Upon, not, not that it matters, but it's just kind of in my head the way I want to do things. Yeah, so we're going to pick this up tomorrow. So a lot more modifications need to be done than I thought or that I was just kind of like plucking out of my mind. And then last night when I was laying awake thinking about it, it's like, oh yeah, like where the battery tray used to be, um, there, oop, as I kick it, there used to be a, a piece here and the battery rests on top of it, but she's pretty Swiss cheesy. But the way I think I want to solve that is, you know, obviously cut that out, but because I'm running a supercharger, I have this tank from uh, Rhodes Race Cars, I believe. But this is, you know, your fluid for the supercharger goes in here. But I think I want to replace that section there with this. But in order to make this work, I have to get it back on the car. And because I'm a, I'm a one-man show, I got to somehow get that on there. And I think I have a pretty good way of doing it. But we're going to find out together. And I might die, but that's fine. Um, yeah, let's, let's get the front clip on there. So we can start mocking stuff up. Oh, and I had to make relief cuts here and here. I basically just guesstimated, took some measurements in order to clear the Mustang two upper hats. But yeah, let's, uh, yup. I'm gonna do this, probably throw my back out. I'm gonna put the front clip on the car. I'm gonna try to do this one hand. I screwed up on my cut. It's way too far. Like I thought I had to notch it out because I thought that these went all the way in. Idiot. Um, <laughs> I went off that measurement to do that cut. I'll make a match. Plus that'll cover, whatever. Not the end of the world. Plus there's that huge, we'll fill that in later. Not worried about it, just frustrated. Um, so yeah, this is a big tank. This is a big water tank. Be able to put ice in it and stuff like that to really chill the intercooler. I already made a notch here in order to make it because i want it as far in as possible right and next to the radiator but i'm gonna try to do this with one hand here okay you can see how big it is right so i want to cut out part of the inner fender structure around it in order to shove it through but things i have to consider i can't block the radiator because the fan basically goes in so i need it to go in far enough that it's not blocking the radiator and then I also can't go in too far where it may hit the tire. If it does hit the tire, I'll, I'll notch this out and then weld some more aluminum in to, to make clearance for it. But I really want this tank to work and I also can't, I need to leave, leave enough clearance to get the lid on and off, which isn't, I mean, it just, well, I can't do it with one hand, but it just twists and then pulls out of the way. So if it gets kind of covered up, shouldn't be a problem as long as I need clearance on the top side for it, should be fine. But yeah, I'm gonna guesstimate on my marks here and then cut it out and then that will also eliminate this rust and that's the whole point of that. So yeah, cut it out. Is wishful thinking. Um, let's see, let's see if I can show you. Uh, didn't work out as I had planned. So yeah, it's <laughs> it's really tight up against there. And if I turn it, it yeah, it hits. So, um, oop, don't do that. I'm basically just gonna have to cut that corner out, push them back together, and weld it so that it's like pretty much flush with the inside of the fender. 
Okay, do that. So my plan is to make strategic cuts. You see how I got them marked out here? Because I need to save this piece and this bottom piece. So this piece will be welded onto here and this bottom piece will be welded up on there. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna cut this all up and start mocking it all up and hopefully there's enough material left over here um, that I can just utilize what I had left over in order to make the clearances that I need. So that was definitely some good aluminum TIG welding practice. Perfect? No. Will it hold? I don't know yet. We're going to fill it with water and find out later, but it's really hot right now. And I left this flange on here because this is going to be on the outside of the inner fender, if that makes sense. You'll see it later. And then I'll bolt it to it that way and then do like one clamp on each side to bolt it to the fender that way too. I got to weld those on yet, but I don't know where they have to be yet, but it's, it's really hot right now. So I'm just going to wait until it cools down and then I'll put it on, find out. So yeah, um, that worked out pretty well. Got the mounting flange welded to it. Um, and then the back ones too. Well, they're bent to fit, opened up. And then I've got nut certs in, threaded inserts, nut certs. Yeah, um, right where they need to be. So I'm gonna see how good I am and I'm gonna bolt this thing up and um, see if it's straight and even level and all the good things. All bolted in, plenty of clearance. I am gonna run like some edge seal run all these hard edges once that's in there or just obviously seal it all off it's got a nice even gap between the radiator and the tank so yeah good deal i like that a lot oh i still gotta leak test it because you know i'm not completely confident in my welds but yeah, and then I am gonna do because that's that these things come with a one NPT, one inch NPT uh, inlet and outlet. I'm gonna cut those off and I'm gonna weld in some 12 an bungs and keep it all 12 an slash three quarter hose, nice and simple. Um, got those on order, so I'm gonna do that eventually. But I just need to get that mocked up because I still gotta find a place to mount the pump and everything else. So this is where I'm going to call it for this one. Got a lot knocked out. Weekend's worth of work. Got the lower fender parts all welded in and primed and ready for the green paint. Um, got that tank mounted up. Really wasn't expecting to have to do that much work, but you know what? Got it knocked out and I'm really proud of it. Got a lot more to go, <laughs> especially with the front end mock-up and stuff like that. Um, I really was planning on taking the frame out from the car and cleaning it all up and painting everything. But I mean, I gotta do, I could do these steps first because I don't really want them to have like a nice clean frame, nice clean firewall, and then having to do all this modification through our welding dust and everything else everywhere. I'd rather put it together when everything's good and done and ready to go. So as always guys, if you made it this far in the video, thank you very much. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Got a lot more to go on this car. Gotta get on the road. Thanks guys.